Hi there Outback owners, today in your 2016 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 3 2 inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. Our cross tube is going to be hidden completely behind the bumper, so you're only going to see the receiver here at the back. It's a Class 3 2 inch by 2 inch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your towing needs. Whether you're going to be throwing a cargo carrier on the back to help free up some space inside the vehicle for more passengers or cargo, or if you want to throw a bike rack on the back instead of getting a roof rack mounted version, which can be a little more cumbersome and difficult to get your bikes up on the roof versus a much lower and easier to access hitch mounted bike rack. You could also throw a draw bar in there and do some light towing with it as well. It uses a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but you can purchase one here at eTrailer.com. It also features hoop style safety chain loops, which has a nice large opening on the inside that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. Now when it comes to the capabilities of this hitch, it features a 600 pound tongue weight, and that's the force going down on top of your receiver. This is going to be more than enough for just about any cargo carrier out there, fully loaded up to its capacity, as well as a bike rack loaded up with four bikes. It also features a 4,000 pound gross towing capacity, and that's how much it can pull behind it. That's going to be more than enough for a small pop-up camper or maybe a jet ski trailer. However, whatever you are going to tow, I want to remind you to verify in your vehicle's owner's manual to ensure you don't exceed any of your vehicle's towing capacities. We've got a couple of measurements for you as well to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it's going to measure about three inches. And from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube, it's going to measure about 15 and three quarter inches. The center of the hitch pin hole measurement is important when determining if your folding accessories can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And the ground clearance measurement is important when determining if you need to drop, rise, or raise shank on any of your accessories. We'll begin our installation at the back of the vehicle with our lift gate open. We're going to need to remove both of our passenger and driver's side taillight assemblies. To do so, we're going to need to remove the plastic trim cover here. There are two plastic fasteners that hold it in place. You use a Phillips screwdriver to pop out the center. Once you've turned the center and it's popped out, you can take your trim panel tool, get behind it, and then just pop it on out of there. We're going to repeat the same thing for the other clip here and the other two on the other side as well. Once you've removed those clips, you can then remove the plastic covering, get a little screwdriver behind it, and pop it out, and then we'll just set that aside. This will reveal the two screws holding our taillight assembly in beneath it. We're going to remove both of those bolts using a 10 millimeter socket. The assembly now can be removed by pulling straight rearward. I do recommend that you use a trim panel tool to help pry it rearward because they can be difficult to remove. So we just kind of put it behind the assembly and just kind of help pry it back. This is a plastic tool. You don't want to use anything metal. Once it pops out, we can disconnect our taillight assembly by removing the bulbs. Just give them a twist counterclockwise, pull them out, twist, pull it out. And this last one here is a connector. So you'll press it on the release tab and then pull it away. We can let those hang there. We'll set our taillight assembly aside and we're going to remove the other one with the exact same procedure. Now just down from our taillight assemblies towards the inside here, you're going to have a small plastic cover. We're going to remove that with a flat bladed screwdriver. There's a small notch here at the top for your blade to fit in and then just give that a little bit of a pry to pop that cover out of there. And that'll reveal another bolt beneath. We're going to remove that with a 10 millimeter socket. There's another one on the other side in the same location below the other tail light. We're going to remove that one as well. We're now in our wheel well. If you have mud flaps in this location here, you'll need to remove those mud flaps and any screws that's holding it into our bumper cover here. We don't have any mud flaps on this vehicle, so we don't have to do that, but you may on your model. And then if we go further up, we are going to have a push pin fastener here that we're going to need to remove. To remove this fastener, you'll push in the center with a small screwdriver. Once you've popped the center in, it can now be pried out. 
So we'll just use our flat bladed screwdriver at this point now to get behind it and then just pop that out of there. We'll do this on the other side as well. We're now underneath the rear of the vehicle. There are three push pins towards the center at the back and then two on each side that we're going to need to remove, totaling seven. We'll use our trim panel remover tool to remove these. You'll take your blade and go into one of the notches around the center section. We're going to pry that out to remove our fasteners. We're going to go ahead and remove all of these. Now all of our fasteners have been removed, we can start taking our bumper cover off. You're going to start on one side, we're going to reach in here towards the top, and we're just kind of going to peel outward gently, and it'll just kind of pop out. Once you've got one side popped out down to here, I recommend that you go over to the other side and then pop that side out just the same. Once we've got both sides popped out, we can kind of pull a little bit rearward and also a little upward towards the bottom until you get it to release. Then check underneath and on the inside here for any electrical connectors that may be present. Depending on your trim package, you may have connectors back there. If not, we're going to work our way towards the center to get the other side popped out as well. With no electrical connectors present on ours, we can go ahead and set it aside where it won't get damaged. Now back behind our fascia, we've exposed our bumper beam here. The foam panel here, we'll just kind of pull off. So we're just going to take that and remove it. And then if we go straight down towards the center, we're going to have this tab sticking out right here. This is going to interfere with our hitch. So we're just going to take it and bend it up out of the way. We'll now remove our bumper beam by removing all eight bolts that are holding it on. There's four on each side and we're going to use a 14 millimeter socket to remove those. With all the hardware removed, we're just going to take it off and set it aside. We can now take our hitch. We're going to set it in place on the studs where our bumper beam used to be. Then once you've got that in place, you can take your bumper beam, slide it back on, and then using the same hardware that was holding your bumper beam on, thread those nuts right back on. Once you get one started on each side, it'll hold the hitch up, making it easier to install the rest of your hardware. We can now go back and tighten down and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. We'll now prepare our fascia for reinstallation, but before it can go back on, we are gonna have to trim out a section here in the middle towards the bottom. This is where are those fasteners were in the middle right here that we had taken out previously. I've gone ahead and marked it out on there where we're gonna to need to trim. You'll find a diagram in your instructions with a similar pattern on it showing what to trim out. Once you've got it all marked out, we're gonna use a pair of snips to trim it out. Now that we've got that trimmed out, we can reinstall our fascia in reverse order of how we removed it. Don't forget to put the foam covering on the back of your bumper beam before sliding your fascia back on. And that completes our installation of Kurt's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on your 2016 Subaru Outback Wagon.